The electrical was an absolute beast. When I came out here a few weeks ago to start putting it together, I had all the pieces, I had months of research, I had a very clear idea of where I needed to go, and yet having all the pieces in front of me still in their boxes and the empty space where I was going to build the electrical system was incredibly intimidating. For those of you who are trying to do your electrical system yourself and you have no experience and you have done your research but you're still not sure if you can do it, just start trying, start crimping, start cutting, start fitting, see if you can do it. Here's how I did it.
This is quite exciting. Uh, we hooked up the, the battery monitor system here, which is just a uh, negative, the negative wire off of the main battery system feeds to a shunt, which then has um, a battery temperature sensor as well as a positive cable that goes directly to the positive end of the, uh, the positive terminal of the main battery. And then that has a wire that connects to this, which is gonna sit in the wall, and it's gonna be my battery monitor system that's visible without pulling out the app, which is what I'm setting up right now. So look, so I'm gonna to connect to, it can see which devices are here because I'm using uh, Victron as my, both my solar charge controller as well as my uh, battery monitor. So I'm going to click on the battery monitor system. It's connecting. It wants the code, which when it first comes, it's just six zeros, zero, 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 zero. Then it's gonna want a firmware update because what doesn't in the 21st century, or not a firmware, a, um, a software update. Uh, and then I should be able to see everything that's going on in my battery system through this app. Uh, and then this will just be uh, battery capacity, its state of charge, and then uh, the flow of energy, I believe is what I can see on here. So you have the shunt, which has the negative cable from the battery connected to it. And then that just connects with your negative bus bar, which is grounded, of course. And then you have your wire that connects to there. And then you have your positive to your positive terminal, which I bought the battery sensor version that tells me if anything's going wrong on the temperature of the battery, I believe, um, just because I wanted to spend the extra $30 for the extra safety. Uh, then I plugged in my solar wiring. And so now we are actually in, uh, we're in bulk charge mode, which I think means my batteries are low enough that um, that they, everything from the solar, uh, solar panels is going directly into the battery. In absorption and in float, absorption I think is like topping off and float is like keeping it topped off, I believe. So we are able to see the state of charge of the batteries as well as how much we're pulling using the solar panels. So it's, I'm in complete shade, the sun is at the horizon, um, and we're pulling 16 watts of energy from the sun, which is nothing when you consider that I have 400 watts capable of absorption up there, but considering we're in the shade, I'm not really gonna give it much of a deal. But tomorrow, I'm gonna park directly in the sunlight and uh, mess around with this and see how much it can pull in direct sunlight. We're now going to take uh, just a standard USB charger. I turned on my inverter and we're gonna see if this works. There's a port on the back of it for USB. So I'm just gonna plug this in here. And then I'm gonna plug this into my phone. And my phone is charging. We got everything more or less set up, but I want to test to see if everything's working as far as uh, how responsive the system is and telling me how much battery I have left. So I have my Panini Maker, which pulls about a thousand watts, I think at its maximum setting. I have a 2200 watt inverter, so that should be fine. We're gonna plug this in, see if it trips anything, see if any wires get super warm, and see if the battery starts to go down after five minutes or so of the pinning maker. All right, so we're gonna plug it directly into the inverter. And the inverter immediately tells me that I'm pulling 900 watts. So the inverter tells me I'm pulling 900 watts. This is heating up and our battery just went down to 99% instead of 100%. Let's see how much a couple minutes of this takes. So another thing to note is uh, when you're using AC power from a battery bank, there's a percentage loss in inefficiency. And I'm actually seeing that here. So I'm losing a thousand, just over a thousand watts by using this 900 watt pole device. So the inverter is using nine, or outputting 900 watts, but it's sucking over a thousand watts in. So far with about uh, a month of use of the electrical system, I have had my fridge connected now for a while. I've had my LEDs with a dimmer now connected for a while. I've had my inverter connected for a while and, and repeatedly used it to draw a lot of amount of power in order to drain the battery bank for various reasons to see how much it uh, can charge at a time. My solar panels have continued to function. My shore power is now installed and that feeds into the battery system well. The battery isolator that is connected to the main house batteries works real well. So far everything works. I'm gonna to continue to connect a few more things. My induction stovetop, stove top, which will be AC and plugged directly into the inverter, which will be less than 2200 watts, so it should be fine. My wall fan, which is incredibly low amperage and should be fine. Everything's working to my great surprise. I'm gonna make two more videos on the system are a couple more videos on the electrical system. One, running through each of the pieces, and then a second one, an exhaustive rundown of everything uh, that hopefully can be useful to somebody. And then probably two more videos, one on the shore power, how to hook that up, real simple, real quick, 
and then the alternator hookup, specifically how to hook that up as well. So, stay tuned.